Hello and welcome to Whiskey Resource. My name is Mark. This is review number 108. And today I'll be doing a review of the independent bottle of a whiskey um, that was distilled at the Kalila Distillery. So this is a, a sample that was sent to me by my friend Tom, who is known as Whiskey Shorts, um, links as always, and his channel. Uh, we did a bottle split, um, so he sent me um, 50 ml of this particular whiskey as part of the bottle split. I think it's about time I did the review of it. So in this case, it is the independent bottler James Eady, and it is the Kalila, um, 11 year old, which has been finished in Paolo Cotardo um, X Sherry Casks. Bottled at 56.5% ABV. So this whiskey, is still available if you do some searching online but it can be or rather it did retail i'll give you some prices it retailed at royal mal whiskies for 69 pound 95 pence it's out of stock there master's malt had it for 67 pounds 95 again it's out of stock there but you can still pick it up from robbie's whiskey merchants for 69.99 um, so if you want to try that, you can go there and you should pick a bottle up still. It was matured for um, just over 10 years, uh, distilled in 2009 um, in ex-bourbon casks. It was then transferred for a final eight month, month finishing period in the Paolo Cotardo sherry casks. Um, there was another whiskey released last year. It was finished in pa Palo Cotardo's, and that was the um, the Bil Bimba Selfridges release. I don't know what that tastes like, um, but I suppose this will give us a bit of an idea as to what that kind of sherry would be like. Um, what else to say about it? Uh, 315 bottles were released as part of a UK exclusive. So it was only intended for the UK market, this particular whiskey. Uh, I don't think there's much else to say um about it this is the first independent bottle by uh, bottle from james Eady that i have tried um his website or their website doesn't really say an awful lot um you have to go to retailers to find out a bit more as to some of the some of the stats about it and that's about it really i think we just need to get on to the fact that this is an 11 year old kalila uh, at 56.5 uh, percent abv cheers tom thanks for sourcing the bottle and, and, and splitting it so on the nose, it's got a rather delicate, a rather light um, smoke. It's not at all intense Isla at all. It's got some toffee. It's got some fruit notes. Um, the fruit's rather um, delicate, really. It's it's like a floral lemon. There's a bit of, I don't know what, there's something else going on in there. I think it probably needs a drop of water, but the smoke's nice. There's a bit of peat, a tiny bit of peat, but it's mainly a, a nice smoke whiff that's going through it on the palate. Sweet. and there's a lovely peaty sweetness starts at the beginning with that sweetness of lemon and copper take a copper coin put it on your tongue and get a copper the metallic it's a bit peppery the finish is very peppery and metallic tingly the alcohol presents itself quite hot on the palate. Yeah, if you stick it right, you know you can get alcohol, but it doesn't hit itself like 56.5 would. It's a bit barbecue on the palate. Hmm. 
Yeah. There's barbecue going on there. In terms of sherry. I would have gone bourbon matured all day long. I would not have said that had a sherry influence to it. It's not it's not jumping out as being traditional fruitcake with rich dark fruits. We get a little bit of salt. Now I've let it linger a bit. I'm gonna put the rest of this in there. This is one of two 25ml samples. So I'll finish that one off. And I'm gonna drop a bit of water in there. I've got water prepared here actually. I haven't brought a glass up you see, so I've got my bottle there to drink from. I'm gonna put three of these little measures of water in there and just let that sit for a bit. It's um yeah, it's not striking me as having that kind of sherry influence. Have you tried this? Have you got the same feeling from it that there's lacking sherry? It's getting apricots. There's this kind of a nuttiness to it yeastiness the alcohol is jumping out of the glass now it's got a, a a vegetal note to it it's not grass it's not hay it's like damp leaves on the palette Oh, the spice. <laughs> Bloody hell. Whoa. The spice was just... Not the alcohol. I mean, the alcohol's there, but... Pepper. Like, a teaspoon of cinnamon. Kind of heat. White pepper and black pepper. Um, mace. Um, cinnamon. Ginger. This is the spice elements from fruitcake. It's not really... Vanilla cream, I'm not getting fruitcake. The fruits of the fruitcake. There's more smoke now whiffing through that. Sweet peat's still there, it's intensified. The finish is long and oaky and spicy and there's vanilla and there's that cream this isn't a this isn't an everyday sipper by a long way this this is this is a dram to share with your mates at the end of an evening where maybe you haven't been uh, testing your palate too much with Whiskies, maybe you've been having um, a few beers and you want to, to round off the evening with a really decent dram and this is a really decent dram. Um, in terms of the other stats, it's non-chill filtered, it's natural colour. Um, is it worth the nearly £70? Yeah, I'm just thinking about how much are you be paying for a bottle like this from somewhere like Scotch Malt Whiskey Society, and the Kalil the Kalilas that they tend to have sit around the eight to ten year old for about sixty pounds. This is an eleven year old, and you're looking on just under seventy. So, okay, you've got to pay for your delivery on top, unless you're looking to do other other items. I'd say it's probably worth worth that. Yeah, definitely. Would I buy a bottle? Probably not. There's 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 not enough um, 
that sherry influence. If I was to buy a bottle of this, I would have expected more sherry. It's presented itself with the spice. But otherwise, I can't see how that eight month um, sherry finish has actually impacted more than what it had with the bourbon. It'd be interesting to try this, just the bourbon influenced cask. See what changes that the, the, the Cortado has made. It's certainly a nice dram and it's certainly a nice, nice spirit. It's got on some pretty decent casks. But that finish, the finish just goes on and on and on. I recommend it if you do if you do see a bottle, keep them around. As I say, um, Robbie's whiskey merchants has still got them in stock. Pick a bottle up. It's 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 you know one to enjoy. Definitely one to enjoy. One to savor. If I pick if I did have a bottle of this, it would last. It would last a good couple of years. I'd pick it up and probably have one one pour from it every couple of months maybe, and I would certainly share it. And it would come out for for shares once all the lockdown business is gone. If I had a bottle of this, I'd pull it out and I'd share it with with people at the at a whiskey taste at my house. Um, I probably wouldn't pick it up that often for myself to drink, other than once every maybe a couple of months. Because it is intense, it is really intense. The peat and the smoke is quite delicate until you put a bit of water in. That's when it really comes alive and that pepperiness. Oh my God, that pepperiness. Ooh, well that's it. That's me. That was review number hundred and eight. There it is.